the gospel today speaks of light and illumination. One of the earliest descriptions or names for baptism is enlightenment, because those who had gone through the long process of preparing for baptism and then experienced the rush of the Holy Spirit upon them at the time of baptism seemed to be have a new vision of life, a new way of looking at things. They were, had been enlightened by the Holy Spirit. So it all ties together. That's one of the reasons why this reading is chosen. Uh, in year A, this is year B really, but we're using the readings from year A whenever we have candidates for baptism among us, and I've been told that we do. So uh, they are our guests of honor today, being prepared in three weeks from today, actually uh, yesterday at the Easter Vigil, they are to be baptized. Um, and so this is a beautiful thing for all of us. The, the way the church does this is to bring them forward to remind all of us who have been baptized of the great beauty and power of the gift of baptism, that it makes us the adopted children of God and fills us with God's spirit. So we rejoice today then on this Laetare Sunday, rejoicing Sunday at the great love that God has for us that he chose us to be his adopted children as we say in the, in the scriptures. God so loved the world, he gave his only son and then he chose to give us an opportunity to be one with Jesus, to share his sonship, to have that relationship. So as Jesus had a unique relationship with God the Father who sent him into the world to be its light. So we too are called to have that relationship through Christ and in Christ to the Father so that we are truly children of the Father. So we celebrate that today. Um, just a few words about the beautiful scripture we have. This is a kind of a modified version of, of, the, of the ninth chapter in John the longer version, it has all the details. It's a beautiful story, but the, the essence of it is, is here. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. Now we know that in ancient times, blindness was a very significant problem. Yes, we have blind people today, but not to the extent that it was so common in the time of Jesus. And there was no cure for it. And so it was a very desperate situation. Blindness, physical blindness, of course, in the Bible would be, would be a symbol then of spiritual blindness. Not, that doesn't mean that those who do are blind physically are necessarily spiritually blind. Maybe they have greater insight than most of us actually. But the point is that in scripture, oftentimes physical things are, as it were, sacraments or symbols of spiritual realities. So this man then symbolized actually our condition after the fall, after the sin of Adam and Eve, that we became spiritually blind. But Jesus was sent by the Father to enlighten us with his grace and his beautiful teachings. So as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. Then he took pity on him, and he used what we would call then a sacramental way of approach. The man was blind, remember. So Jesus took him off by himself, a little bit away from the crowd that had gathered, and he performed this ritual action. He spit on the ground. Got to remember now in ancient times, spitting <laughs> saliva was considered a healing. And actually it is, we know that. And if you ever watch animals, if, if they have a problem, they lick, lick it because they know intuitively that it is, has a healing quality to it. So Jesus took his spittle and mixed it with the earth and he made a little salve and then anointed the man with that. Then he told him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the word in Hebrew means scent. So Jesus is the one who is sent into the world to enlighten us. And 
to be washed in Siloam then is another way of talking about baptism, that we are washed in order that we might see because Jesus is giving us light. And so he spat on the ground, made clay with the saliva, smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back able to see. So that's the miracle that this power that Jesus had to give light to a man born blind. He had never seen anything. And then it goes on to talk about how the people didn't know what to make of this and the Pharisees who always were ready to criticize Jesus and they were trying to, to make things difficult for Jesus as we can say. But at, at the very end then, okay, so we can skip over that for the purpose of this homily and notice that Jesus finds the man. He heard that they had thrown him out. In other words, that's a symbol for expelling him from the synagogue, from the worship. He found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Now, we don't have time today to speak about that, but that's a very symbolic name for, that Jesus gives himself. He's the Son of Man, which means he truly is human, truly one of us, but he's very humble. And the scriptures also speak of the fact that a Son of Man must, be, uh, must undergo death and suffering in order to redeem humankind. Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered and said very honestly, Sir, who is he that I may believe in him? So he had the incipient faith. He had the willingness, the openness to believe whatever this man said because he was the one who brought light into his, into his life. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. So beautiful way Jesus very gently tells him, I am the Son of Man. I am the one sent into the world to bring light. And the man said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Interestingly, the only time in the Gospels that, that the verb underneath that worship is actually used is here and describing in Matthew's Gospel, describing what the Magi did when they came, they offered his gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They worshiped him. So it's a very dramatic ending to this beautiful story. I do believe, Lord. So we're talking today then about sacraments, about baptism as an illumination of our faith, opening our eyes that we may see the love that the Father has for us in Christ. I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. So those to be baptized in all of us then, baptism is a way in which we enter into the mystery of Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man.